Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. You're the mighty man of war. God bless you all. God bless you all. Please share as you come on. Share as you come on. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank God for your lives. I bless God for your lives. Satan is a liar. God bless you all. God bless you all. Good afternoon to you as well. You're the mighty man of war. Lord, take absolute control. Go ahead and share this on your wall. You can share it in groups, relationship groups as well. Uh, if you know any single friends of yours, you know any single friends of yours, you can invite them to join us. You know any single friends of yours, you can invite them to join us. <laughs> um, you can invite them to join us. You know any single friends of yours, you can invite them to join us. Youth can join us as well. Today I will take questions. I will take questions. It's just one hour. It's just one hour. And then I'll pray for just one hour. So come on on time. We'll start very early. Go ahead and share quickly. And while you're sharing, don't just share it. Put the description on top of it for singles, you know, for those that are dating. If you are courting, watch this. If you are looking for a spouse, if you're not looking for a spouse, go ahead and watch. So put a description on top of it. Put a description on top of it. The relationship matters. Um, you can do that. Don't just, don't just share, you know, put a description on top of it. Don't just share, but put a description on top of it. I thank you, Jesus. Father, I bless your name. I commit this event into your hands. I commit this session into your hands. Take absolute control in the name of Jesus. Take absolute dominion in the name of Jesus. Take absolute control. You know, those of you that are not married can join as well. You can definitely join us, contribute. Contribute your ideas as well. And your what you have learned in life so far, you can contribute all that as well. So we definitely want those of you that are not married to also contribute. <laughs> yeah, so it's not just for us, but then also those that are not married. Those that are married, those that are married can also contribute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. You can host, host a, a watch parties. You can host watch parties. If you can host watch parties, that would be great. Host watch parties, that can be great as well. If you want to uh, host watch parties, that will be good. If you want to host watch parties, that will be good. God bless you. 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 
You are Jehovah. Mighty man of war. Pastor Patience, God bless you. Jehovah. This is going to be very exciting. Very, very exciting topic. Um, I know many of you have been, and I know many said, you know, they'll be at work, so they may not have time to join us uh, because of their work. So that's fine. I will leave it on. Uh, you can share with others as well. You can share with others. But go ahead and share when you come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and share. When you come on, invite your friends that are single to join us. Invite them to join us. Thank you, Jesus. You're the mighty man in battle. God bless you all. Be in the mood of prayer, okay? Be in the mood of prayer. That today you will not live the same. That you will add on to your faith knowledge. Be in the mood of prayer. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel the need to stand. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to stand because I feel the Holy Ghost telling me to stand. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to stand. Kanda atande de atanda bahaya. Adada, but the things that I'm going to talk about, you need them. You need these wisdom. You need it. You need it like. And some of you, you will reevaluate if the relationship you are in is the right one for you. You will reevaluate. Release the hearts and share. Release the hearts and share. You will reevaluate at the end if this relationship is for you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you will reevaluate if this relationship is for you. You will reevaluate if the relationship you are in is the right relationship, is where you should be. Very, very important. Very, very important. And if you should still pursue, if what you're doing, where you are, if it's the right place for you, if you should find something else to do <laughs> with your life, you know, <laughs> you will learn all that. You will learn all that. You will learn all that. You will learn all that today. Kada da ba skede bo shant da haya, kede bo skede be kada ba shint da haya. You have your pen. Please get your pen and paper ready. Very very important. Get your pen and paper ready. Get your pen and paper ready. Get your pen and paper ready. Very very important. You're going to want to write things down. You're going to want to write things down. Very very important. You're going to want to write things down. So go ahead and do just that. Kayada bashenda bahaya. Kebe de bos kata ta kata kata. Kada da bos shanda da baso de be kabada bahaya. Abada bashanda da ba kabada bas kebe de boyanta da ba bahaya. Kebe de bos shanda da ba baso be de be kabada bahaya. Kabada bos shanda da ba ba kabada bas sebe de be kabada ba baha. Kabada bo shanda da baba so be de be kabada baba ha. Kebe de bo shanda da baba baha. Kebe de bo yanta da ba kabada baba shanda baba baha. Kabada basko de be kabada ba. Release the hearts. Kebe you are ready. We praise God. I praise God that you are ready. I'm thankful to God that you are ready. I thank God that you are ready. It's good that you are ready. It's good that you are ready. Ayada da da ba shanda da ba kabada baba so de be kabada baba Lord, take absolute control. Take absolute dominion. Take notes. Yeah, Lena, take notes. You have to write notes because I'm teaching. So you have to write notes. Very, very important. Very, very important that you write notes. Very, very important that you write notes. Holy Ghost, take absolute control. Take absolute dominion. 
take absolute control. In the mighty name of Jesus, take absolute control. Take absolute dominion, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Kadadabashaya. All right, so I'll go ahead and start. I'll go ahead and start. Kadaba, all seven of you release their hearts. Tap into this atmosphere. All of you share. And when you share, please put the description on top of it to share to others. Go ahead and share. God bless you as you do that. God bless you as you do that. Today we are talking about relationships. Yes. The question is, when a guy say that I'm interested in you, what do they mean? You understand? When somebody first see you and say this, Ooh, I'm interested in this person. Ooh, I'm interested in you. What do they mean by that? When they say that they are interested in you, what do they mean? Because what are you doing that they are interested in? What is there about you to be interested in? So that question, I'm interested in you. That is usually the first thing. You know, woman of God, you know, there's a guy that likes me. There's a guy that likes me. There's a guy that likes me, woman of God. There's a guy that wants to talk to me, you know. What does it mean? <laughs> it can mean a good thing or a bad thing. To have interest in something, it doesn't always mean a good thing. So, there has to be something you are doing. Something about you that he's interested in. So, what is it about you? What were you wearing when he saw you? Where were you when he saw you? Where were you when he saw you? Where were you? No commenting, please take notes. No, no side comments. Just listen. I don't want you to be commenting. Max Deans, don't be writing things like that because I don't want their minds distracted. So just listen. Just listen. No commenting and stuff like contribution and stuff until I ask for it, please. So, what is it? Where were you? All those of you side commenting, Elizabeth, don't write that thing again. Max Dean, don't write that again. Very, very important. Just be quiet and listen. Or you can type amen or something. But just listen because it's a teaching and I want people to benefit from this. I don't want a distraction whereby people are listening to the side comments because it will not help them. Thank you very much for understanding. So, what is it that they are doing when they found you even them the men themselves when they saw you what were they doing what were you doing what were you wearing very very important what were you doing what were you wearing where were you when they found you that they are interested in you hmm so when somebody says that they are interested in you, it's not a place to be laughing and giggling and be flirty and be happy in your mind. What were you doing? Were you at a party with your friends? If you were at a party with your friends and you were partying and you were drinking and laughing and giggling, then what is it about you that shows interest? If you were at a strip club, you saw him at a club in the night time. He was with his boys. You caught eye with one another. And he says, I'm interested in you. And you start laughing. <laughs> Where were you when he found interest in you? Where were you? Where were you? Very, very important. Where was he when he found interested in you? When he found interested interest in you, where was he also? What was he wearing? So the interest has to germinate from somewhere. Are you understanding me? I know you are. The interest has to germinate from somewhere. The interest came from a place. Where was he? And where were you? When you guys found interest with one another, where was the place?
When he says, I found interest in you at church, maybe worshiping. And he can sense that this person is highly anointed. Mm. Saw the glory of God over your life. When a man see you like that, do you think the next thing he's going to ask for is sex? No. So the interest is very important. And what is it that is interesting in where he saw you? When you read Ruth chapter 2, the Bible says, Boaz saw Ruth in a green field. And all of us want a Boaz. Nobody want a dumb, put that word there, <laughs> or a broke, or a poor, <laughs> or a lazy. Everybody wants a Boaz. <laughs> And Boaz married Ruth. Where was Boaz? Where was Ruth? When he found Boaz. Ruth was in the green field working. You want a Boaz? Where are you? Where is Boaz going to come and find you? Where is Boaz going to come and find you at? What are you doing when Boaz found you? Hmm. And that would determine the relationship. It will set the course for the relationship where you were found when he found you. When he found you, and I'm talking generally to the women, because at the end of the day, you are the ones who decide who you marry. The man can't force you to marry you. You have to accept his proposal. So 80% of the marriage stand on you, 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 you woman, the choice. 90% of the situation stand on you, woman. It is your choice. So where were you? What were you doing? The Bible says that in Genesis 24, that when um, uh, Abraham sent one of his servants to go find a wife for Isaac, what was Rebecca doing? Rebecca was fetching water. And Rebecca, being so nice, fetched some of the water for some of their friends. When you come on, go ahead and share and release the hearts. He fetched some of the water for the friends, for the, for the guy. And he caught his eye. And their interest germinated. And that is how Rebecca ended up marrying Isaac. Where were you? Where is his interest in you germinating from? Were you half naked when he found you? Or did you have clothes on? What were you saying? How were you? What were you? What environment were you? What environment was he in? It's very, very important. That not just where you are, but where environment was he in? Was he half drunk? Did he have alcohol in his hands? Shaking? Red cup? When he came to tell you, Ooh, I like you. Ooh, I want to be with you. Did he have red cup in his hands with alcohol in it? And now you are married, he won't stay home. And you are upset that he will not stay home. You found him with a red cup in his hands and he was shaking, drinking, telling you how pretty you are because you were half naked. So interest does not mean anything. Interest means nothing. When a person, a guy sees you and he says, I'm interested in you. What were you doing? The first thing you should come into your mind. Where am I? 
What am I doing? Where is he? What is he doing? These are the false, first four questions. Immediately a guy meets you and says, I'm interested in you. First four questions. Where am I? What am I doing? Where is he? What is he doing? Where is he doing? Don't ask questions. Just listen. After that, I said I will give time for questions. No questions right now. Listen carefully. Four questions will come in your mind when a guy tells you I'm interested in you. Then, when you answer those questions, interest can mean he's there to add to your life or take from your life. I hope you are listening. Don't be too concerned with typing amens. I want you to write notes. Don't be too concerned with typing amens because this is teaching. And I don't know if I'll touch this top topic again. The other thing, if you come on, you can go ahead and share, invite your friends, all 100 of you, go ahead and share and invite your friends as well. The other thing is the interest. Is it there to add to your life or take from you? If I see cookies and I'm interested in the cookies, I want to devour it. Isn't it so? I want to consume the cookies. I'm interested in the cookies. When I see food I like being served and I find interest, my eyes lay interest on the food. I want to eat it. So now you have figured the four questions. Where are you? Where am I? What was I doing? What was he doing? The second thing is, is he going to add to my life or take from my life? Is she going to add to my life or take from my life? Because now women are also approaching men. The interest, where is it germinating from? Is it that he will take or she will take? Or he will add or she will add. What do I mean by that? If a guy sees you in a club with half of your clothes off, your breast showing, your boob showing, and he is also holding a red cup with his friends, and you see that he's cute. He sees that you're cute. And you're laughing. And he comes to you and says, Hey girl, I'm interested in you. 100% of the time, he's coming to take from you. Because there's nothing about you that says investment. 100% of the time, he's coming to take from you, not to add. He's coming to what? Take from you, not to add. He is coming to take from you, not to add. If a guy finds you doing nothing, and he all of a sudden says, I'm interested in you, he's not coming to add. He's not coming to put clothes on you, no. He's coming to take from you. He's not coming to glorify you. The little that you have in the position where you are, the interest is to take. And if you are in a club with half of your clothes off, if you are in a, uh, a party with half of your clothes off, then you have little. You don't have much. And the little you have, he's coming to take. So now we've established when the guy says they are interested in you, the first first questions you should ask is, where is he? Where am I? What am I doing? What is he doing? First of all, then when you answer those questions, the second question, the second two questions, set of questions is, is he coming to add or is he coming to take? It can even be a church. You can sit in at the church. You are singing, oh, Lord, how I love you. You can be in the choir singing and the glory of God is in the place. 
the glory of God is in the place and you feel his presence. You feel his power and you are, and you are, you know, you look so glorious. And he walks up to you. Hey, sister, sister angel, I'm interested in you. Sister angel, I'm interested in you. The first question you should ask, is he coming to add or is he coming to take? As for that question, ask it everywhere. And the other four questions, ask them, what is he doing? What was I doing? What is, where is he? Where am I? Location and action. What you're doing, important, the interest. The second thing is, is he coming to add to my life or is he coming to take? The fact that a man comes to church and appears to be spiritual does not mean that you should go and date him. Period. The, I'll say that again. The fact that you are at church and the guy appears spiritual. It does not mean that you should date him. It does not mean that you should give him a chance. You have to first figure out is he coming to add or coming to take? And within the first week of your conversations, you will know. If you are not so paying attention to the car he's driving and the way he's talking to you and the way his googly eyes is looking at you and if you are listening to him like a wise woman, in the first week, you will know that this guy is in your life to take. Not to add. You will know. If a woman approach you, gentlemen, sees how nice you are dressed, the shoes you're wearing, your car, and she's flame with you. Hey, hey, Koku. <laughs> hey, hey, Evans. Hey, Daniel. Hey, you're so cute. <laughs> hey, I like your car. When are you going to take me for a ride? <laughs> Immediately, you should know. This flirting, is it adding or is it coming to take? Because you men, you also need a woman who will add to you. The girls also need a man who will add to them. Very important. Very, very important in the adding aspect. Very important. Very, very, very important. Don't sit there and assume that just because she is pretty, that just because she is pretty and she likes you, So both of you have to be careful, both men and women. Within the first week, you will know if his interest is to add into your life or his interest is to take from you. Within the first two weeks, you will know. It will be clearly evident what this person is in your life for. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. You will know right away. The others are limited. Very, very true. And it all depends on where you are. The man of God, I always use my marriage as an example because in natural, I'm in the best marriage. I, I love my marriage. I thank God for my marriage. The others too, only God can bring them into your life. I have spent my entire life being with men that took from me. I want you to know that. I've spent my entire dating from 17 to the age of 22. Being with men who took from me. Oh yes. They took and took and took and took. Raped and beat. The little I had, they took. 
Some of you, you put yourself in a position, the way you are labeled, they say, come and take written on you. Some of the you ladies, and I speak to the women again simply because you are the ones that make the decision. At, at, at the end of the day, it is your decision to bring that man into your life. You understand? Nowadays, we live in a generation where a man cannot force you to marry him. You have to make the decision. The power of relationship is in your hands. And some of you, where you have positioned yourselves, you have take, come and take from me, written all over you. I had come and take from me, written over me. When I went to parties without a bra, and I wore see-through clothes, what was I saying? Come and take. I thought I was bold. I was being a feminist, all right. But yeah, but I was preaching, come and take. I was exercising my femininity. But the, the outside, men don't think like that. Men don't think like that. And so you are telling them, come and take. With my red lipstick, with my eye and looking at them, all the things you guys be doing. I've done it over. You can ask some people that are on. They know me. You can even go to my Facebook Go into my Facebook and look through my pictures. Some of the pictures, I've left them there. I've done it all. I had come and take written all over me. And even if the guy is someone who adds, even naturally, if he's a guy who adds, because you have come and take written all over me, he will come and take instead of adding. Put yourself together. Where were you found when he found you? What are you doing? You want to marry. Where are you going? What places are you going? Do you think like a man like Boaz, you find him in a club? Do you think like a man like Boaz, you find him at parties, messy parties? A man like Boaz, do you think you'll find him at some strip club? No. No. Even men like Boaz, they don't even wait for church to end before they leave. Immediately the pastor finished preaching, they are out. They're busy. They rarely go out. You will find them at Wednesday Bible studies where you don't go. You go to Sunday services. They go to Wednesday Bible studies. The way you are dressed, you have come and take from me, written all over you in the church. With your skirt all down and your boom, boom, boom. You have come and, listen, you want to say, well, it's my body and I'll dress however I want. That's fine. But at the same time, you are looking for a husband, aren't you? And so I want to tell you how they are thinking when they see you as a bold, strong, feminine, feminist woman. What they see you as, if the way you are dressed, speak more flesh than brains, then you have come and take written all over me. And you can even turn a guy who is an adder to a taker. Why should he respect you? It's cold hard truth. And I'll give it to you. Cold hard truth. Cold hard truth. How do you comport yourself? This Facebook that you are on is such a powerful tool. What are the kind of statuses are you posting? kind of videos are you sharing? How are you comporting yourself? How are you behaving yourself? Facebook is such a powerful representation of who you are. How are you presenting yourself to the world? How? You take pictures with your back all pushed up, front all pushed up, 
and you write some scriptures on top. Everything that you write as a status, canal, shallow minded, and you expect a Boaz to come and notice you. Huh? You expect a Boaz to come and notice you. Because listen to me, the men, they are also going around looking for people that can add to them. Do you know that? Some of you are married to takers. I know. Don't worry. We'll pray for mercy for you. I know. Some of you are married to takers. It's okay. It's okay. God can change anything. <laughs> With God, all things are possible. <laughs> Release the hearts. <laughs> Release the hearts. With God, all things are possible. Don't worry. And go ahead and share as well. I told you guys how I used to be. I don't shy from my, my background. There's nothing to be... I mean, I shame about. I say this thing to you to educate you, to get you to understand. You understand? I was in church, all right, doing all those things, all right, but I was very carnal minded. From the age of 22 to 17, I started dating and all that stuff. Very, very carnal minded. The way I behaved, the way I did my things, the places I went to, the way I presented myself. I realized that I had tickets written all over me. Now, I don't blame myself for being raped. But I have to take responsibility for where I put myself. I'm, I am matured enough to take responsibility. I'm not excusing what he did by taking responsibility. I take responsibility for where I put myself. Where I put myself. That he will beat me and I was still with him. And I wasn't even married to him. I had no ties to him. Yet he will beat me. And I still wanted to be with him. But I was going to church. I did all the coninaling and the cananaling that you all do in churches. Sing, dance, worship, cry. Played the part, come home, not changed. Didn't really know Jesus Christ. You understand? Until I finally stopped dating altogether. And some of you, I want to address your minds. You should stop dating altogether. Just stop. Because now you're realizing that I have, I, have, I have written upon myself takers. I've written upon myself takers. I need to change it to an ad. And then I stopped dating, started, stopped um, um, going to all those things. And just begin to really focus on God. So that God can change me. Because I was broken. Even, the thing is, I was at a place where. Eh, that even when an other came into my life. Even if the guy came into my life to add. I was so broken. That I would have automatically converted him into a taker. I was so broken. So broken. 
and many of us, that's the position we are. Your head is not right. What is your foundation? Your mind is not right. Your heart is not right. You are hurt from previous relationships, broken from previous relationships, and you have not taken time to mend. And you are here rushing to another one. You got to let God put you back together. Take time. Draw closer to Jesus. Develop an intimate relationship with him and let him draw closer into your life. And heal you. And put you back together. And while you are in God, while you are in that hospital that is Jesus, he will make sure that it is a doctor who will come and marry you. There's that phrase that be in love with, so G with Jesus so much so that even when a guy comes to find you, you have to find Jesus to find you. It's a very, very true statement. I have lived it. I have lived it. After going through the brokenness, one guy will come and take from me. The second guy will come and take from me. The third guy will come and take from me. The fourth guy will come and take from me. I stopped. I realized that I was as broken as a car without an engine. I stopped dating. I was pretty all right, but I was broken. I stopped I stop where right. It's hard to recognize a giver after you've been taken. Yeah. So you have to stop. That's what I'm saying. If you've been with continuous takers, you have to just stop and seek God and seek Jesus and let him redirect your brain. Be renewed. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Romans chapter 12. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And you fall in love with Jesus. Some of you need to go a whole year in the Lord. Studying the word. A guy approaches you. It doesn't matter who he is. Just let him go. You're not ready. You are broken. Even if he's a good guy, you, you will turn him into a taker. Even if he's an angel, you will turn him into Satan. Because what? You are broken. You are not in the place to be in a relationship with anyone. Proverbs says, bad company corrupts good character. Isn't it so? So even while you're recuperating, you will say, well, woman of God, but what if I'm like two weeks into it and a real, a guy come and meet me, a pastor wants to talk to me. What if I'm in two weeks of like just seeking God and a pastor comes into my life and he says, I want to be with you. Ignore him. Ignore him. You are not ready. Bad company corrupts good character. And you are bad company. You will corrupt him. You are broken. And he's not the one to fix you. God is. Human beings don't fix other human beings. It is Jesus that can fix you and put you back together. And if you give Jesus time to rearrange your mind and put you back together. Then the pastor, a year, six months from now, he will still be waiting for you. He will still be there waiting for you. If he's your husband, God will make sure he goes nowhere. I was the same. Yesterday I was talking to a young girl who called me and said, well, woman of God, a guy is really interested in me and I'm going to leave time for you to ask questions. Go ahead and share when you come on. Go ahead and share. Release the hearts. I, I, I found a guy who really likes me and I want to know what you think. And I said, well, is he going to add to your life? He said, what do you mean by that? She didn't even know what it means for a guy to add to her life or take. You understand? So it's very, very important that you spend time doing, taking care of these things.
when I was with the man of God, after I took off a year, go ahead and share, Gail, go ahead and share, invite your friends to come on. After I took off a year from the brokenness, from the beating, from the guy who came and destroyed my credit, <laughs> from the one who raped me, from the one who was going to kill me and I had to throw myself out of the car. And I decided that, you know what? I am broken. I cannot see. I don't know how to pick them because I am the woman and I pick them. And so I went to God and I decided to stay with God and pray and seek his face for one year. I did not date. Did men come into my life? Yes. But the closer I got with God, the more I realized how broken I was. You are broken, Blackburn. That's what it is. You are broken. It's okay to admit to it. You've been broken. The closer I got to Jesus, and I saw the way he loved me, and I realized that this is not the type of love I've, re I've had since I've started dating. I've never had this type of love. I realized how broken I was. And even at that time, if you were a Pope and you came to me, I'll tell you I'm not ready. A year into it, the man of God came into my life. I was in prayer tower when he met me. The man of God came into my life. I was in prayer tower. Prayer ministry. That's where we met. Our foundation was built on prayer. The way he spoke to me. Eh? It was like, and the way he reverenced me. Later on, he said to me that he had, God had given him a dream about me three months before, but he was even just afraid to approach me. So he prayed that God will put us together somehow. And so he fasted for about two weeks that God will make a way to put us together so that he can even develop the, <laughs> the Kololo to come and say hello. <laughs> because he saw the way I'm praying he saw the fire of God over me. He saw how the Lord was in my life. And something about the fire of God in me caused him to tremble. The moment he told me, he didn't even tell me that God has told him to marry me. In fact, he prayed that I will find out myself because he didn't even want to brush on me the idea that he's forcing me. So we were just friends. We would talk on the phone. And while we would talk on the phone, he would say things like, whoever marries you, eh, their job is to just fund the flame. That's it. Their job is to fund the flame. He would say things like that to me. Whoever marries you, their job is to just fan the flame, the fire. Just serve you. He will say things like that. <laughs> and then I was, I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I, was, I was dumbfounded. I've been talking to a guy for three months, and he's not, he's not asked for sex. <gasps> Never. He's not even asked for sex. 
a part of me, I will tell you this, a part of me was still broken even when I met him. That when he did something really profound for me, I wanted to reward him with sex. Because I was so broken that guys always take from me that I said, like, you know what, let me just go ahead and give it to them. So in the later part of my broken relationships, I was the one that was initiating the sex because I don't need to wait for them to come and even take. I'll just give it up. At that time, I was broken. And he said to me, you want to reward me for doing something nice to you with sex. That's what he said. And I was like, I didn't think about it, but that's what I was doing. And he said, no, you're too precious. Mm. You're too precious. He was an adder. He was an adder. Hmm. He was what? An adder. You are too precious. You don't have to reward me with yourself for what I do for you. And he rejected me. Who? He said, sorry, no. I didn't even think men like that existed. The second thing that I thought of was, is his stuff all right? <laughs> the second thing I thought of was, is his stuff all right? <laughs> because I was still broken, Jesus. I was still broken. I want to be honest with you. I was still broken. Now, the fact that he has said no is his fault. His stuff is broken. It's not broken at all. <laughs> but <laughs> he was an adder. He did not come to take. And he even helped me to respect myself. He taught me who I was in God and added to me. He will wake me up at 3 a.m. and will go to the parking lot at the church and pray from 3 to 6 a.m. He said, this girl, you are too broken. Hold on, please. Hold on. Hello? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Sorry about that. I had to answer that call. I was broken. He was an adder. He was an adder to my life. Sorry about that. I had to answer that call. He was an adder. And he knew I was broken. And he began to fix me. Put me back together. Pray. He found my flame. He found my flame. I mean, look at what I'm doing on Facebook. Huh? This is his Facebook. I know some of you forget that this is the Ernest Oponis Facebook. I hope you for some of you have forgotten that this is his ministry. And he literally just gave it up for me to come and preach. He will take the kids, hold them, watch the kids while I have Gethsemane and Sunday with you. 
And it's not that he's not anointed. He is even more anointed than me. The gift of prophecy is him. He has the gift of prophecy. He's a prophet, my husband. And he is, works in miracles as well. He is a teacher of the word. Most of the revelations I get, I teach here, is in conversations with him, and I will steal some. But because he's an adder, he... he's an adder. He said, you know what? Let me fan your fire. Let me, let me fan your fire. Let me fan your fire. Let me fan your fire. And he will take the kids and I'll be sitting here preaching. He even now, he has the kids while I'm preaching to you. He has the kids now. He has the kids now while I'm preaching to you. You see that the house is quiet. This thing that I'm teaching you, he already knows them. And it is possible for you. It is possible for you. I remember the first time I cooked. <laughs> and he ate. He said, wow, this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. And, and I went into my mom's house. And he ate my mom's food. And of course, my mom's food was much better. <laughs> than mine. <laughs> and the way he looked in his face. Like while he ate my mom's food. I was like, man. I said, so you've been lying to me this time? He said, I'm not lying. I like your food and I like your mom's food. <laughs> I like your food and I like your mom's food. <laughs> and then he was like, I'm even going to stop eating your mom's food. I will only eat your food. <laughs> I'll only eat your food. I won't even eat your mouse food. <laughs> He's always just trying to do things to, to just add to me. Add to me. And a man like that, I tell you guys, I couldn't have picked him. My God. I can't even take credit for the man that is my husband. I was too broken to have to, to pick a, such a man. God has to just bring him to me. Such a man, I was just too broken. I was too broken to pick such a man. I was too broken. I am too... No, 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 no. I couldn't pick him from a lineup. Only Jesus Christ can prepare a man like that and bring him to you. But where are you? The question is, right now, where are you? Where are you right now? Where are you right now? Where are you? The question is, where are you right now? Where are you? Hmm. Where are you right now? Where are you? Where are you? It was God who had picked him for me. I couldn't have picked him. A man like that, I couldn't have picked him. It was God who had picked him for me. My soulmate. A man like that, it's easy to be humble to him. It's easy to call him my Lord. Mm. I don't struggle at all to call my husband my Lord. Mm -mm. I don't struggle. He's a man who loves God. And it's not the fact that I'm pretty old. I hope... You are, not, you are not concerned with the fact that I'm, I, I was pretty. No. I even told you that even when we married, I was not even a great cook. <laughs> I wasn't a great cook. I'll be honest. 
There's no need to lie. I wasn't even a great cook. It wasn't the prettiness. It wasn't the cooking. And I didn't have money either. I didn't have money. I contributed zero to our wedding. I'll be honest. I'm not trying to put myself down so that you will, you will, you will feel better. No, it's the absolute truth. I contributed zero. Contributed zero amount to our wedding. It's not that I didn't want to contribute money to it, but I just didn't have. I just didn't have. I just didn't have. And there's never been a day that I wake up and say, I regret marrying this man. No. Never. He loves God and he fears God. And God gave him a vision of me before he married me. Why? Because I was in God. God had warned him about me. He said three months into meeting me. Three months into meeting me. God came to him. Showed me him. And told me, this is your wife. And this is how you are to treat her. Yes. So those of you going by your beauty. Going by your looks. Going by some money you have. Or don't have. Or some calabash. Ways of life, living. Going by your breast and your thick lips and how oval your eyes are on how well you cook. Even Halle Berry. Huh? Even Halle Berry. Her husband cheated on her. Going by how much money you make and how much money he makes. Be careful. Be careful. Only God can give you a good head over you. Because Jesus Christ is head over you. And only him, because he watches over you and protects you and guides you, only him can give, put a good head over you. Only him. Only Jesus. All 170 of you release the hearts. Only him. Only him. Only him. Only him. I remember when I had my miscarriage. I remember. I will never forget when I had my miscarriage. I will never forget this story. I, they did a DNA. I came out of the, the place the hospital out came out of it he saw me and he said to me we will never have sex again <laughs> now why did he say that because he just doesn't want to put me through such a pain whereby i have to get pregnant again and lose it again and so what what can he do to make sure that that never happens. <laughs> he says, the first thing he says to me, he said, we will never have sex again. That man felt my pain and he wanted to put an end to it. Of course, I didn't agree to it. <laughs> I didn't agree to it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But he, 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 he cares 
for, 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 he cares for me. His pain is my pain. His pain is my pain. You understand? His pain is my pain. His pain is my pain. So please, when a guy tells you I'm interested in you, sometimes it means you should just run. When a guy tells you I'm interested in you, sometimes you should just run. Just run for the hills. It's not time for you to be laughed at. <laughs> because you yourself, you realize you are not even deep in Christ enough. You are not deep in Christ enough. You are not deep in Christ enough. You are not deep in Christ enough. You can be a virgin, but you are not deep in Christ enough. Your change is occurring. I answered this question earlier. You can post your questions now. You can post your questions now. As I answered this question earlier, should I give up on relationships and seek Christ, not inner peace? Seek Christ, Blackburn. You seek Christ. Your change is not occurring until you seek Christ. And as you seek Christ, your mind will begin to change. Who you talk to will begin to change. Where you go will begin to change. How you behave will begin to change. How you talk will begin to change. And that will attract different kind of people into your life. So you should give up on relationships. Yes. Stop dating. And seek Christ. And be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And when he has completely changed you, you'll be drawing other proper men than the one you've been drawing. Anybody else have a question? Can I ask a man directly what he has to offer me or add to my life? No. Because you will never get that answer. Can I ask a, per a man directly what he has to offer me or add to my life? No. You have to find out in conversations we usually in the first week or two you will know in the first week or two you will know you will know in the first week or two jennifer you will know that is an answer you find out you will know if he's from god you will know yeah so you don't ask him you keep talking to him and you keep talking to him and you keep talking to him ask him questions Ask him biblical verses. Pray about him. He will begin to open his mouth and say these things. And you will know if he's coming to take into out of your life or add into your life. Within two weeks. Within two weeks max, you will know. Another question. I hope I've answered your question. If I've answered your question, please write out. You have answered my question. If I have not, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Can you please give clues or hints to no intention? That is discernment. That is discernment. That is discernment. Oh, Blackburn, you are a man. Sorry. God bless you, Blackburn. Yeah. Blackburn, please see Christ first. See Christ first. See Christ first. Yeah. Can you give? That's why you should pray, Mamie Fua. That's why you should pray. You need discernment. You need discernment. Discernment. Nobody can fake discernment. The spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are children of the living God. You need discernment. That's what I'm saying. If you are deeply rooted in Christ, if you have allowed yourself to be fixed, if you've allowed yourself to be deeply rooted in Christ, if you've allowed yourself for your mind to be changed, to be renewed, you will have discernment. And your discernment while he's talking, because now many people are married to pastors who beat them, because they didn't discern. They saw that the pastor was anointed, preaching to a whole bunch of people, casting out devils, but he was, he was evil. He was Satan. He was Satan. He was evil. 
and they did not really give much thought into it. That alone, that alone will go to tell you that that person is not from God. Discernment. I cannot give clues or hints. You will know them by discernment. Okay? In the, uh, in the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That is a scripture. Go look for it. In the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He cannot lie. He cannot continue to pretend for two weeks. He will show himself. And if you are prayerful, the spirit of truth. You see how when I come on and I say, anybody that has a witchcraft spirit, let me pray for you. And everybody say, me, me, me. Why? Because the spirit of God is me. The spirit of God in me is communicating with that evil spirit. And it must speak the truth to you. So discernment is what you need. God bless you. Linda, shall I stop praying about marriage and let God bring him on his time? Yes. I never prayed about marriage. I never prayed about marriage. I never prayed about marriage. It is something you do by faith. If it's something you do by faith, it's something you do by faith. It's something you do by faith. Yes. Seek God. Seek God. He will direct your path. The Bible says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 3 to 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct. Directing your path means he bring people into your life. People who are to be in your life. Your husband into your life. I never prayed for a husband. My husband that I have, I didn't pray for him. I couldn't even pray for such a man. I could not even pray for such a man. God just had to give him to me because I needed him. I was a helper to him and he was a helper to me. God bless you. If a guy love, you love, leave you, can you pray for restoration in your relationship? If he's left you for another woman, please, no. Let him go. Pray. Seek God. Don't pray for restoration in anything. Go stop whatever you're doing and seek the face of God. Let God help you. Seek the face of God. The healing atmosphere. There's a healing atmosphere. Please go ahead and release the heart. Release the heart. No, I don't believe in divorce. But if a person, it depends. It depends. Valiga, let me answer, finish answering Valiga. Valiga, don't pray for restoration. Hide yourself in Christ. Let the situation go. Because... Chances are, you are being fixed, but he is not fixed. You understand? And the more you stay in God, maybe God may not want that relationship for you. You understand? You may just have to let him go. Remember, a guy is your head. The one in your life that is coming to you. He's not your partner. The guy is not your partner. He is your head over you. He is a head over you. You understand? So don't just pick any colo man. God bless you, baby girl. Do I believe in divorce? It depends. If you married the wrong man, yes, I believe in divorce. The Bible says that God hates divorce, but it gives permission for divorce. So I don't like divorce because God doesn't like divorce. But the Bible gives permission for divorce. But you have to have good grounds. Is he cheating on you? Is he killing you? Is he committing adultery? You have to have grounds. You can't just go to the Bible, read the Bible, know in your heart that this relationship is not taking you anywhere. Go ahead and, um, yeah, don't pick any coloman. Very true. So, but go by the biblical understanding. Okay, Dylan, Fayan, Dylan, yeah. Fire and Dylan. Nobody believes in divorce. You know, it's like asking me, do, we, do I believe in sickness? No, it is there. Sickness is there. I don't believe in it. I hate it, but it's there. So is divorce, you know? If you have to do it, you, yeah. That's a very powerful question. Ola Mood, let me answer this question. Let me answer this question. How do I know I'm ready? Such a powerful question. Oof. Such a powerful question. How do I know I'm ready? Powerful question. You don't. How do you know you're ready? You don't know. Release the hearts. 
How do you know? If you have not shared, go ahead and share. If you have not shared, go ahead and share. How do you know you're ready? You don't. You never know. You never know that you are ready. You never know. You never know. Ola, I did not know. Nobody knows that they are ready except God who trusts you into that particular environment. The Bible says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So when it's time for marriage, you are deeply rooted in Christ. God brings a man into your life. And you realize that this thing is heading to marriage. You're not ready. It's God believing that you are ready. You still need God. So you can never be ready for marriage. God will just trust you, put you in that position, and he will guide you. God will say you are ready to be married, and he will put you in that position. But even then, you're not ready. I, even when I was marrying, I wasn't ready. But God felt it that I was ready to marry, and I married. And he made sure that he put the necessary tools. That's why I'm saying, let God lead you. Because he's the only one that can help you. Let Christ lead you. He's the only one that can lead you in a successful marriage. Very, very important. So, no, you can never know that you are ready. But if you are hidden in Christ, he will know that you are ready. God bless you, Ola. What's the other question? This one, let me answer that one. Newman, does God sometimes show you the husband... He has for you in your dreams. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't bet on that. It's possible. God is sovereign. He can do everything. But I wouldn't stand on that alone. I will ask for serious confirmations. Series of confirmations. I will also watch and pray. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with asking God for more information. I do that all the time. People say, well, isn't that rude? No. I'm, I'm dumb. I need to know more. My mind could be playing tricks with me. You know, the thing with dreams is that Satan can also give you dreams. And God can give you dreams. Yes. So Satan can bring a man into your dreams to tell you that he's the one. Yeah. He can bring a man into your dreams to tell you that he's the one. So you need more than that. You need severe confirmations, severe confirmations, severe confirmations from pastors, from people around you, from prophets. You understand? And if God is talking to you, listen to me. He's not a silent God. He will talk to you. He will tell everybody. 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 I want to take a moment and pause to pray. Then I'll continue asking, uh, uh, answering the questions. I'll continue answering the questions. I want to take a moment to pray. All 170 of you, I want to pray for you. Those of you that are broken. Somebody wrote and said, I'm broken. I feel led to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, any woman under the sound of my voice that is broken. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will fix their hearts. I pray that you will fix their hearts. As we have talked about this, Lord, as they dedicate their life to you, as they dedicate their hearts to you, I pray that you will fix them, Lord. I pray that you will fix them, Lord. I pray that you will fix them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will fix their hearts in the name of Jesus. Any woman, any man, oh God, that is broken, oh God, I pray that you will mend their broken heart. Let the balm of Gilead heal their heart, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your power visit them. Let your presence visit them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Please keep coming on. All right. Please. What if you have a friend for years, you started talking, then one day, oh, Jennifer, one day you have a dream about him with Pastor and friends. One day a dream? No. When God is talking to you, he will give you more dreams. Don't go on that. I think I've answered that question. Don't go on just one dreams. God will give you repetitive dreams. God does not talk about only one dream. He will confirm it to you too. And I don't want you guys only going about God talking to me in dreams. No. He must also talk to your spirit and your heart. You must hear him, not just in dreams. So if you're only hearing from God in dreams, then madam, you are not there. 
what can I, what can you say about a man you have dated for about three years, but his mom says you will not marry him? That's a very powerful question. Lip, lip, Lipsia Yvette. Well, there are many things like that. There are many, many situations like that. Many, many situations like that. When the parents interfere. Um, it depends on both of your spirituality. Sometimes the man can be a Muslim. You are a Christian. He's converted. And the family members can say, we don't approve of the marriage. That does not mean that you should not marry him. It just means that you should be more prayerful. All 180 of you release the hearts when you come on and share, 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 share when you come on. So I wouldn't let that situation. Irene, please don't answer anyone. Please don't do that. I don't want you doing that. Irene, don't do that. Don't do that. I will answer her. Don't do that. Don't respond to anybody's questions. Please let me do that. Okay. Don't respond to anybody's questions. Let me do that. Okay, so Yvette, what I will say to you. Yvette, what I will say to you. Is. Pray about it. Pray about it. If it's God will, you'll make a way. And even if that of, you know, the mother still doesn't disapproves of it. If the mother disapproves of it, still, God will still grant you grace. God will still grant you grace. God will still grant you grace. There are some marriages you go in to go to war. But may let God give you the grace. I will say pray. Pray about it. Don't give up on the relationship. That is not a cause for you to give up on a relationship because the family disapproves. No, because when you marry him, you don't, well, technically you marry the family, but it's not their decision to make. It is you and his decision to make. If he loves you, stay with him. God bless you. God bless you. All right, KK, you want to not date. You want to just commit yourself to God, dedicate your life. I've been there, my dear. My darling sister, I've been there, KK. I've been there. I've been there. I remember when God used to tell me that I'm going to marry. I used to beg God, I don't want to marry. I don't want to marry God, please. I don't want to marry. I don't want to marry. I just want to be with you. I just want to be in love with you. I just want to love you. I just want to love you, keep you all to myself. Lord, I just want to be single for the rest of my life. I don't want to marry. Take this man out of my life. Don't bring any man. Don't bring any man. But that was not his will for me. So, KK, as much as you want to be alone, and I perfectly understand that, as much as you want to be alone, if you are deeply rooted in Christ, it may not be his will for you. It will not be his will for you. The reason why I made those decisions, KK Amor, was because I feared that the way I picked terrible men, the way I picked terrible men, that he will come and break me. That the man will come and ruin my relationship with Christ. So when I kept saying that, in a sense, I wasn't allowing Jesus Christ to heal me. So don't go telling God that you don't want to be with any man. Because that is, it means you have not surrendered your will to him. Don't go telling God that you don't want to be with any man. No. Tell him that his will be done in your life. And if his will for you not to marry then you won't marry. And then you'll be happy. But if it is his will for you to marry, then you shall marry and allow him to heal your heart. So it's not your decision to make. If you've surrendered your life to Christ, it's not your decision to make. It is his decision. I used to think the same way, but I made the decision to marry 
I accepted his decision for me to marry and it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I've never regretted it one bit. And I thank God that he allowed me to marry. So um, I hope that this one helps you as well. Yes. God bless you. Woman of God, is it okay to marry again if my ex-husband is still living? Of course. It's okay, girl. It's okay. Yes. Go ahead and marry again. Go ahead and marry again. But please, marry the right man. Hmm? Marry the right man. Marry a man after God. Hide yourself in Christ. Joy, it's very okay to marry again. Go ahead and marry again. But marry the right one. Marry the one who God has for you. Stay in God. Stay in God. Marry the man who God has for you. Marry the one. I have about ten, five more minutes. What if you've been dating a guy for three years and he suddenly said you are not good enough? Let him go. You know, there's this thing about women begging guys to be with them. I can never understand. It's only a broken woman who will beg a guy to be with him. If a guy comes to you and tells you after four years, after five years, and say, I don't want to be with you anymore, let him go. That's why I keep telling you, you can't pick them. I've been there. I've tried to pick them. I always pick the abusers, the ones who use and abuse you and throw you away. Some of you are begging guys just to bring him back into your life, just to beat you. It's because you are broken. A part of you is broken. You don't know who you are. Stop the dating and allow Jesus Christ to fix you. Study the scriptures. Come on for the teachings. Build yourself in the Lord. And let Christ bring a man into your life. Let Christ bring a man into your life. A man who will not tell you that after three years that you are not good enough. Obviously, he's come to use you. And after three years, he's done with you. And he wants to throw you away. This is not a man God brought into your life. This is not a man Jesus helped you pick. This is a man you picked yourself. I've been with such, such men before. Said it was time for me to have another girlfriend. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. He was cheating on me with another girl. And he wanted me to be okay with it. And I was okay with it. Oof. Yeah, I've been low. I've been in very deep low. Yes. Yeah, I was okay with it too. We knew each other. We knew that he was sleeping. He was talking to her. And I knew. But I couldn't bring myself to leave him. Because I was so broken. I was so broken. Many of you have been in that same position. You know that other girl. That's why you find yourself rushing for his phone. You find yourself rushing for his phone. To check his phone. Because you know. A bit of you know. Yeah. Do away with him. He's not the one for you. Go back to Christ. Go back to the porter and let him, let him fix you. Let him mend you. Let him fix you. Let him mend you. Hallelujah. Let him fix you. Let him mend you. I will not delete this video. I will not. I will not delete this video. How do you deal with marital pressure? When your family don't even meet people. Yeah. Let me answer this last question. And then we'll continue on this later. We'll continue on this later because I have to go. You were in that situation for four years. Yeah. 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 Oh, Rose. You will find one. How do you deal with the marital pressure? My sister, don't let any family member force you into marriage, yo. Huh? Hey! Be ready. Be ready. God will bring them. Are they the ones marrying for you? No. Let no family member force you into marriage. Let nobody peer pressure you into marriage. Eh? It's not that somebody is pressuring you to go and buy milk. Oh, eh? 
Hey, the milk is on sale. The milk is on sale. Go and buy milk. Hey, that's not what marriage is. That's not what marriage is. Go and buy milk. It's on sale. No. <laughs> marriage has the ability, the power to shape, break, or make you. Break or make you. Break or make you. Please be careful. Be careful. Let God tell you that you are ready. What about worship and giving? Is it okay to give when you are not married? What are you giving him? Huh? huh. Exchange of gifts lead to premarital sex. Be careful. Be careful. Exchange of gifts while dating and courting leads into premarital sex. Be very, very careful. When you are marrying and you are giving, be very, very careful. Exchange of sex leads into premarital sex. Be careful. Be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. I pray for all of you. Yeah, I'm about to go. I'm about to go. I have to get out. I have to get out. Release the hearts when you come on. Release the hearts. Release the hearts. If you have anything to give, give to God. All right? Yeah. God is the best bank investment ever. Yeah. God bless you all. God bless you all. I pray for all of you. All of you women under the sound of my voice. I pray for all of you. May the Lord bring all of you, your boas, into your lives. I have to go. I have children. I have to cater to my kids. I have to clean my house, go to church. Tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow. It will be fire. Tomorrow will be fire. Please watch the video over again. If you have questions, go ahead and inbox me. And I'm sure maybe Saturday we'll do it again on this Saturday. Come in. On this next Saturday, come in. We'll do it again. And come on time. Many of you did not come on time. You joined late. If you join late and you have many, many questions, I can't answer them. So join early on time. Join early on time. Let your friends share with your friends. If they have questions, they can ask them ahead so that I can incorporate the questions into the teachings. So that I can incorporate the questions into the teachings. So ask the questions. Send me the questions so that I can incorporate. Hello, Pastor Ishola. God bless you so much. Ask me the questions. What do you say? At what point you marry a wrong person and you know it? What? What if you marry a wrong person and you know it? <sighs> Mama Delia, <laughs> I'll call you on that one. Let's add that one to next week. Let's add that one to next week, Saturday. Okay? <laughs> That one will go into next time. As for that one, dear mama, it's not a single single people question. Oh, <laughs> mama Delia, that's a that's a married people question. <laughs> mama Delia, that's not a single people question. Oh, mama Delia, that's a married people question. <laughs> it's a married people question. It's not a. Hey, men, men are there too. As for you see, the reason why I didn't talk so much about men in this one, because Uncle Marshall. You can even understand, you as a man, that when you met Oluchi, she had to accept you, right? So when it comes to picking the marriage, it's usually the woman that makes the decision, not the men. The woman that makes the decision to accept the women. Oh, the men are there. God bless you, men. I know. Men, you guys are there. I know. I see you. But as for the single topic, is at the end of the day, the women are the one with the power to accept or reject your proposal. And so they are the ones that are making the decisions. And that is why I spend the time addressing the women's decision. But God willing, on Sunday, you men to send your questions in. Send your questions in. When are you going to teach the guys to... Hmm, very powerful. Very powerful. Very powerful. As for guys, I will allow the man of God, man of God to teach you guys. Maybe. I'll see if the man of God will do it. I'll see if the man of God will do it. And maybe I'll sit with him. So maybe, maybe throughout the week, maybe throughout the week, he will talk to you guys on how to pick a right, a right woman. You know, because if I teach you guys, I'll probably be biased, you know. 
Um, but I want to answer your questions about women. I will sit next to him to let you know what women think about certain things. But the reason why I spend so much time addressing because at the end of the day, it is the men, the women that chooses the men. I hope you understand that Uncle Paul and Uncle Marshall and Daniel and all the rest of the men that are there. I hope you understand. And Daniel, I understand, you understand that it is the man. It is the men. It is the men that, you know, that chooses. Yeah. 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 I think I've been teaching about the godly role. I have not teach about the traditional role. But it is the men. Men are the ones that come to you and you have, we always pick the wrong ladies. It's true. It's also true. It's also true, but it goes into, um, there's no traditional and godly about, and there's no difference between it. Okay. At the end of the day, I've never seen a woman kneeling down for a man to accept, kneeling down proposing to a man. It is the women, R Rika. So do away with your pride and listen. Okay. At the end of the day, when, uh, as, 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 Feminist as you are, the man has to buy the ring and put on your hand and you take his last name. So stop with the pride and listen. There's no such a thing as feminist role and godly and traditional role. There's one role and it's godly. And it's godly. And that's what I've been teaching today. Yeah. The man is the head. Whether you like it or not, he's the head. Men are the head. And the sooner you start realizing that, the better. Men are the head. Whether you like it or not. But at the end of the day, you are the one that pick the man to be your head. And so you have power. And that's why I spend the whole time addressing women. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But next week, we'll probably go more into it, spend more time, maybe two hours, maybe two, three hours, address the women, address the men, and then address marriage people. So God bless you men for coming on to listen. Um, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What are the special effects of taking your husband's last name? Uh, let me answer this last one. What are the special effects? The special effects of taking the husband's last name. I mean, do you want to keep, why do you want to keep your name? He's coming to take your hand in marriage. Oh, as for that one, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about it later. But you know, why would you want to keep your name? He's coming to take your hand in marriage. So you should take his last name. It's as simple as that. Do you want to keep your last name? I don't know why nowadays people are mixing, take some of their last name and take another, some, and the man's last name and they mix it to make another new last name. It is, it's, it's something else. It's, it's, it's something else. It is, it's something else. I don't know why people start doing that, but it's, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. There's no need to keep both. Hey, Rika, I don't know where you are coming from, my dear. But we need to talk. Take your husband's last name. Take your husband's last name. He's the head over you. If you don't take his last name, if you take his last name, he's the head over you. If you take his last name, if you don't take his last name, he's the head over you. You understand? He is the head over you. He is the head over you. Whether you like it or you don't, he is the head over you. You take his last name, you don't take his last name, he is the head over you. You take your last name off, Go and bring somebody else's last name. He's the head over you. Once you understand that. And so if you're marrying him and he, you tell him, I want to keep my last name and he says no, you take his last name. 
you are part of him now. You no longer belong to your father. You belong to your husband. So you should not keep your last name. I don't know, some satanic strange things are going on in this world. I've taken my, last, my husband's last name, Opuni. Am I, am I subdued? Is he beating me? Do you see chains on my hand? Do you see chains on my hand? Do you see me responding to him, uh, uh, cooking, cleaning, and sweeping the house? Do you see that? No. He is not equal partners with you. He is your head. Unless, of course, you don't want a biblical marriage and you want to go and marry with your own principles. It's your own palaver. As for that one, you can go and do your own. But he is your head. I don't know how clear I can make that. And you need to respect him as such. And give him the due respect as such. Don't even go into, into courtship thinking that you want to keep your last name. It means that you don't respect him. And these are because you are not deeply rooted in Christ. And you don't know who you are. And that's why you want to keep your last name. And if you like your father's last name so much, then stay with your father and not marry. Okay? Yeah. Very important. The man is the head of the house. Your husband is your head over your children. So if you're not ready to give up your last name, don't marry. It means you're not ready to marry. Yeah. What if she says she wants to add a meeting name to the last name? I wanted to do that too. Jojo Akwe. I wanted to do that. And my husband said no. And I did not. So, and now I don't even desire to do it. So, I wanted to do that. My husband said no. And that was it. It was done deal. I threw away both names and I, I'm now happily opening no middle name, no back name. So you, the man, is your decision. That's what I believe. It's your decision. If you wanted to keep it, if, you, if she's okay with keeping it, that's fine. If it's not, talk about it. When I discussed it with my husband, he said, you know what? I'm not so sure about it. And so I did away with it. Because it, it meant nothing. Either way, I'm taking his last name anyway. So it doesn't matter. And he's the head. He's the head. He's the head. Ay, 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 ay. He's the head. So, yeah. Yeah. God bless you. More questions are coming. But God bless you. We'll continue this later. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. I still use my last name from my father. But what you are saying, I'm going to give up and use up my husband's name. God bless you. Rhea, God bless you. God bless you. If I... Hadn't done anything. If I hadn't done anything at all, I know that that alone is more than enough. Rhea, God bless you. God bless you, Rhea. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. She said that I still use my last name, but after what you said, yeah, he's your head. You don't belong to your father. You belong to your husband. Why should you use your father's last name? And some of these things, it goes into the implication of the marriage. It does. Hmm. I'm glad that you've listened to the voice of God, Rhea, and making that change. It will affect your marriage greatly. God bless you all. Thank God for your life. Tomorrow I'll see you at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Send me the questions and make sure you share as well. God bless you. Bye-bye.